Oh, no. <laughs> well, that didn't work because he his peripheral vision must have seen her coming. And as she came, he went this way. <laughs> and, and when she came back, he went that way. Never said a word, just kept watching. That's a sacred moment, then, Mother, when the ball is snapped. When the ball is what? Snapped. With a, Snap. The, snapped. The center passes the ball to the quarterback between his legs. That the ball was snapped. That's what they say. He offered the ball, snapped it, and offered it between his legs. What kind of a game is that? Well, they have to set themselves up for the position where they can best attack the enemy. That's what they're doing. You pay to watch those games? Yeah, you pay a lot, don't you? That's right. Huh? You would if you could afford it, yeah. Well, what do you do if somebody comes to confession and says, I watched football seven hours? Do you ever do that? They don't think it's wrong, huh? That sounds like my confession. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but only one day of the year, Mother. Only on January the 1st, when they have the bowl game. You start game. the new year that way? Yeah, I have to, because... Uh, just to show what a sinner I am, you know, to acknowledge my sinfulness. That's why you do it, to realize you're a sinner? Well, I don't need football to do that. <laughs> but it, the playoffs are special, too, with the Playoff pros. or playoff? <laughs> the playoffs. The play <laughs> I thought he said the payoff. <laughs> That's pretty good. I want to know that game. <laughs> the playoff. The playoff, so yes. What does that mean? That means the best teams in the league play each other. Ah. And then the last game is the Super Bowl on January the 30th. You watch 30th. that too? You have to almost. Well, my resolution for this past year, after January 1st, was to watch just one quarter, the last quarter, because that's when most of the action takes place. So I've shown a little bit of mortification and self-denial there. That's for football. What do you do for baseball? No, that's not an addiction for me anymore. Football is the addiction I have. Do you eat a hot dog while you're watching? No. No? I do a lot of praying. <laughs> for, the, for the team I want to you win. You can't pray while you're eating a hot dog? No. no that would... Uh, spoil it. That would spoil my focus, I think. Mm -hmm. Really. It's, it's total concentration. It's almost as though you're playing the quarterback and taking the snap from the center there. So it has to be perfectly quiet. I bet he gives good missions. <laughs> I bet you do. You understand human nature so well. That we do. We have a lot of it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, Father, I think you're great. And I, I think, I think you, you pray for the team. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I've caught myself doing that. Like for the Pittsburgh Steelers and the team that I want to win. Why do they call them Steelers? S-T-E-E-L-E-R. Oh, they're they not steel. stealing. They're Steelers. Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> they stole the game, I bet. We wish they would have done more of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Father, in all of these things, we can be holy, right? I think in moderation, but I think I'm immoderate sometimes. I must confess that publicly. Too You're immoderate much. at football? Watching it, maybe too long. If I gave way to my inclinations, I could watch a triple header. Three games on one day. You and can? I know ladies think this is the pits. That stupid I football. Pit, I know you're typical of the ladies, though. But a, a lot of men can do that. They, they have nothing else to do. Well, they have to relax a little bit too. But a I don't give bit. in to that temptation. <laughs> do you have that much football on one Sunday? I don't get a chance to watch more than a few minutes, though, because we're always out with these retreats and missions oh, yeah. and things like that, though. But the last couple of minutes. That's the whole game right there. What happened if they flop from the first minute to that last three? That happens too sometimes, yeah. And did you just blow the whole thing? Yeah, they do that. I've seen a few like that. 
What do you do? Walk away with your head down in total shame? No? Yeah, some of our fellows get so mad. Yeah, people get mad at oh football games. Oh, my, do they ever. I used to be a drum majorette in a football game, in, in high school bands. Really? Oh, yeah. I was pretty good at it. Not the best, but pretty good. And I would root for both teams. <laughs> I, I didn't know who was going where. And I, I just thought if anybody worked that hard to hit whatever they hit, the goal or whatever, they ought to get a clap or something. And they fired me. <laughs> they kept hitting me on the head and say, you're rooting for the wrong team. <laughs> I said, but you worked hard, you ran fast. But that's the wrong team. And I never f could figure that out, why everybody wasn't happy, no matter where they went, as long as they got where they are going. See, Mother, you showed the beautiful spirit of detachment from very tender years. That wasn't too tender, but <laughs> I just appreciated what he did. <laughs> sure, that's good. <laughs> I, I was just always sweating, and they won, and Archie was, oh. I couldn't figure that out. I guess you got to have a team you're rooting for, is that it? That really helps, yes. Yeah? Uh -huh. hmm. Well, <clears throat> I didn't go to confession very often in those days, so I'm glad I didn't. He wouldn't have understood. But that was, probably wasn't confessional matter, though, really. No? I don't think so. Hmm. But I'm glad I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> I was terrible, Father. I really was. But tell us something now about, with all of this, the enthusiasm of football, the addiction, we can say, of football, basketball, the wrong red. And then you have the other ed educational and entertainment vices. How does one overcome that? I mean, it must be difficult if you know there's an awesome uh, football game going on and, and just to, uh, to pass it by, I mean, it, does that happen? Can somebody that, do that? That would be a very special grace to do that. And of course, the big thing that we'd be concerned about if those same people who go to the games on Sunday don't go to Holy Mass on Sunday. If, um, Maybe that's one of the arguments for Saturday evening Masses. Mm -hmm. So they can do that. But sometimes, these younger kids, like elementary school children, have their games at the time when church is going on. And they don't get the Mass then. I, think that, I would find that hard to understand. And that's very, very sad. But again, it's the parents that don't give the example and don't supply the motivation for it. You know, while we're at it, the Holy Father has a document on resting on Sunday. Okay. I'm sure he didn't mean just to go to sleep. What did the Holy Father mean when he said we must keep the Sabbath? What, the, the, what does he mean? I don't think most people know how to do that. Well, the big thing is the worship of God. And for us Catholic Christians, it's the holy sacrifice of the Mass. But then to utilize that time to recoup your strength that you need by way of diversion and reasonable exercise and Entertainment, too. Mm -hmm. I think that's all part of it. And he's a beautiful encyclical on work. He said, we have a right to a vacation. And that necessary leisure, too, so that we can build up our strengths. I think that's the heart of it. But St. Francis was strong on this business of serving God and working to build the kingdom. Mm -hmm. and nothing could take the place of the Lord and his holy will. Do you remember that line in his first order rule to us, how to reconcile the work with the prayer, or anything else with prayer? He'd say, I worked with my hands and most earnestly do I desire that all my brethren employ themselves in honest work, mm -hmm. not from anxiety to receive wages, but for good example's sake. Mm -hmm. And then he added, I work with my friends. <coughs> the friars shall work faithfully and devotedly, in such wise that avoiding idleness, the enemy of the soul, they do not extinguish the spirit of prayer and devotion to which all temporal things ought to be subjected. So first things first here. Well, how 
how do you how do Capuchins, for example, keep keep Sunday the rest of Sunday? You you obviously have to have many masses and confession, but that isn't all day. No, of course most of the retreats that we have are on the weekends too. So you're going into the afternoon pretty much, and you're not home until like supper time. Yeah. But for those that can take a little nap, that's a beautiful diversion for some of them too. A little oh, yeah. break that way. Yeah. Did you ever hear that little poem? Breeze there a priest with luncheon fed, who never to himself has said, I think I'll take a little nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them are into sports themselves, taking a nice walk. Yeah, there's as many varieties of entertainment as there are Friars Minor, though, really. True. Sure. True. They're all different. And it's a vocation that appeals <laughs> to so many different types. That's why maybe in a Franciscan family it's harder for us to get along with each other because there's such a variety among us, maybe. Who said we don't get along? <laughs> we do, but it's an extra special grace, even to the point of heroism at times. <laughs> <laughs> but we're all different, though. Everybody's different. Right. It's the same in families, isn't it? I mean, you may have 10 or 12 children, but they're also different. How true that is. In our family, too, there were seven girls and five boys. And my mom had three sets of twins. Three? Paul three? and Pauline, Joe and Josephine, Bernard and Bernadette. And I came after two sets. That's why they gave me the name Matthew in baptism. Why? Matthew means gift of God. And when you cut the diapers right in half, you're a gift from God. <laughs> there were no pampers in those days. I missed that diapers cut in half. I, 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 uh, well, you just use half the number of diapers for a singleton as for, oh, a, yeah. for a couplet. Yeah. There are twins after you? Yeah. And that's Bernard and Bernadette. And Bernadette's son was ordained for the priesthood for the Archdiocese of New York just uh, three years ago. And her other son is going to be ordained with the Legionnaires of Christ this year. Praise God. Isn't that special? Oh, yeah. Very special. She has the I, I'm forgetting that they're supposed to ask you questions. We're going to take a little break, as much as I know it's like doing it, so that you can ask Father some questions, and we'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> I, I just had to tell you that, Father, there's a very beautiful uh, tape, audio tape, on the, on the rosary. And, and of course, I love this picture, Our Lady of Good Counsel. And it's a beautiful picture. Just call it, you give them free. They're free to you, Mother. Oh, thank you. Yes. But the audience. Yeah, well, they could make a free will offering for oh. me. <laughs> well, I say it, it's free, but. So, a dollar? A dollar. Okay, a dollar. It don't cost that much, does it, to print it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make a little profit for him. But it's a beautiful prayer that you wrote, isn't it? Right. In the back. It's very pretty, and I think anything you can have it would be beautifully 
framed. Father, I'm not going to frame it for you, but I think if you want to send him a dollar at, do we have his address? At St. Paulinus. Right. Paulinus Shrine. Hmm. No, church. 622. Oh, there it is. Is it? Yeah. It's on your screen. St. Paulinus <laughs> Church. <laughs> 622 Delaware Avenue. Now, that's not hard. Think of Paul in Delaware and you got it. Clareton, Pennsylvania, 15025. So I think it would be worth a dollar. i make it a dollar thirty. Thirty cents postage, isn't it? Okay. Give them a, give them a few cents postage. A dollar thirty. Now, if I was offering it to you, <laughs> you're getting a bargain from him. <laughs> Do it. <clears throat> We have a call. Hello? Hello, Mother Angelica. Hi. How are you, dear? Good. How are you? First of all, I want to say I thank God for you every day. Thank you, Jesus. You helped me through many hard times. Well, I know. And my question to you is, we're very poor, and my husband has bone cancer. Oh, God. And I started watching EWTN when my best friend committed suicide because I'm unable to go to church due to anxiety attacks. And you've really helped me through so much. But I was wondering, is there any certain scriptures that can build up my enthusiasm for my faith during this time that's really trying me? I'm going to let Father answer that, and then I'll say a few words. Father, is there some place in scripture that would give her that courage to, to, to persevere through this struggle? The first thing that strikes me is what Jesus experienced in the Garden of Gethsemane. Father, let this chalice pass from me. Yet not my will, but thine be done. Mm -hmm. Or those words from the cross and crucifixion. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then to use that maybe as the springboard for that prayer, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Sacred heart of Jesus, I place my trust in you. To keep repeating that. I think that's where it is, through the, the Lord on the cross. I think if we can have a better source of strength and inspiration mm -hmm. and grace than that. Yeah. And then to receive the Lord sacramentally in the Eucharist, if you're ever able to receive, because that's the fruit of the cross taken right within our frame. Mm -hmm. That's where the answers, I think, start to find their solution. And, and uh, I think that that's beautiful advice. And, and don't forget our dear Lord suffered everything we suffer. Huh? He did. He suffered loss. He suffered heartache. He suffered everything you suffer, I suffer, everybody does. So he wanted to. He wanted to feel what you feel. He wanted to know the difficulties, you want to know hunger and thirst, and all that. We can all relate to Jesus. See, we can all relate to Jesus. And so sometimes just talk to him and just say, Lord, I, I'm at my wit's end. I'm not able to cope with this. Just be very honest with him. And, and you'd be surprised the strength that seems to run through us and our, our desolate spirituality at that point and in and, and the dryness and, and the hardships of something like you're going through. So <clears throat> I think you, you can do that easily because Jesus wants to know how you feel. He really does, doesn't he? And our great consolation too is that we know that he knows what we're going through. Yeah. We never have to go it alone. He always has somebody to share it with. Mm -hmm. And we believe he's closer to us than our own hands, mm -hmm. closer than our own consciousness. Yes. St. Paul would say it like this, in him we live, we move, we have our being. And if he, he is not conscious of every disposition or indisposition in my frame, that's not the God that I worship. Mm -hmm. He knows everything and that's why there's a virtuous way, I believe, to respond to any difficulty in life without committing sin. Mm -hmm. We don't really have to sin yeah. to find that illegitimate attempt to escape from pain. But the crucifix, I think every home should have the crucifix 
in the bedroom or somewhere, somebody to focus on, to see how God copes with pain. Mm -hmm. Why do bad things happen to good people? If anybody could ask that question, it was surely the Lord. Yeah. And he took it all. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, last night we were talking about Sister Raphael. And uh, if you remember Bernadette Subiru, the, the one that Our Lady appeared to at Lourdes, there was a time during one of the visions early on when she said from the depths of her heart, yes, yes. And, and I was surprised and pleased when as sister was dying, she kept saying, yes, Lord, yes, yes. And I think sometimes in your condition, if we could say that, you say yes, Lord. Less to the fact that you don't know why or when or how and if it'll ever end and how painful it is. If we just have that generosity of saying yes, Lord. Yes. I think that's what he said. And that's what our lady said throughout her life was yes. Father, would you like to, we have four minutes, would you believe the past, time has passed so fast. A little message for our audience and a blessing beside that. Yes. I'll give you two minutes for one, one minute for the other, and one minute for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to tell you, Mother, how much the people in western Pennsylvania appreciate all that you have done. Oh, thank you. To Father. evangelize give them their mind just mind. the United States, but the whole world, too. Thank you. We try. I think you reach more people than all the bishops and priests of the country put together. <laughs> I would say that too loud. <laughs> well, we praise, and, we praise and thank God for it. And that's why we move here at DWTN with great joy. Thank you. And the test of joy, according to Gilbert Keith Chesterton, is gratitude. Gratitude to you and to all your helpers down here. Thank you. How beautiful that is. I pray that you'll live a long time, too, so you can keep it up. I just want to pay my debts. <laughs> I don't think the right we're going, it's going to be that easy. I do. I, I think old life, old age is a blessing. I've always prayed to our dear Lord, let me live a very long life. I'll be 77 pretty soon. But the reason I do is because every day, I learned something new about God and that I didn't know before. And, and it, it's awesome, you know, God is awesome. And, and the longer you live, it uh, seems to me you just know more and more about the Lord and His uh, utter generosity. You know, I was telling somebody today I, that this place uh, is, is a, a place of so many miracles, you know. And, 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 and I hope it lasts a very long time. Could you give us a blessing before I forget what I asked you to do? Sure. May the Lord <laughs> bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and have mercy on you. May he turn his countenance to you and give you peace. May the Lord bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You'll have to come again sometime and give the whole audience a retreat. How would that be? I'd love that. You'd love that? I think they would, too. Well, now I got my minute. <laughs> As if you didn't know what I was going to do with it. <sighs> we need you <laughs> to keep going, you know. And, and I do thank you from the bottom of my heart for letting us, allowing us through your great generosity Last night, a little boy came up to me, just about that big, and he had a truck, one of these toy trucks. And he said, this is all the money I saved for you. Well, I just wanted to cry because he's just a little tight. And, and he, he really saved money. And he said something that really touched me. He said, you know, when we go to, I forget what little restaurant it is. He said, when we go there, he said, I take water instead of a frosty, <laughs> and, and I give you the money. Oh. And this guy is just about this big. And I thought, 
when I was his age, I wondered if I would have given up a Frosty, you know. At my age, I didn't have Frosties, but I thought it was wonderful. And so I just say thank you, all of you. Thank him if he's listening. And most of all, know that you are the benefactors of this entire operation. So please be generous and know I love you. And let us all say yes to God. Bye now. Thank you, Father.